1781. Let's take it back to the revolution. America and Britain ain't got no solution. Ross lays a helpless with his sexy scar. Dr. Candy is there, and so is Colonel Despard. Ross bleeds on the table, feeling death is near. He's promoted to captain. We like mad fools here. We need brothers like you, cause this war ain't no fun. Stitch him up, Ennis. This, this rap's, rap's not, not done. done. Fast forward 1800 present day. Despard's in prison for an extended stay. Wrongly imprisoned. All seems lost. So he sends his wife Kitty to go get Ross. Welcome to Poldark Dish. I'm Marlies. And I'm Elise. And today we're going to be dishing about Poldark Season 5! Episode 1! It's the beginning of the end! Oh no, we can't believe it! But we're so excited to be bringing you our first episode from our favorite place on Earth, Rose Tree Cottage in Pasadena, California. Rose Tree Cottage is one of the major sponsors of both Poldark Dish and the Anglophile channel, and we love it here! Yes, so thank you to Mary and Edmund Fry for hosting the Poldark Dish. Well, are you ready, Elise? Pinky's up. Here we go. A little recap. Ross is fishing at Nopar Cove. It's fish aside. No, it's not. It's sex aside. Ow! Ross, Ross, row your boat gently down the stream. Take off your shirt. Jump in the waves and make the cougar scream. Roar! Aww. Maybe it's cold outside. George closes up shop in Trenwick. He says it can rot in hell. Translation. I'm running away from painful memories of Elizabeth! But Valentine says, I don't want to go. Jeffrey Charles has come to Nampara! And he's regenerated into a 45-year-old man! That's pretty hot one. I'm cougaring. Jeffrey Charles wants to join the military, but he ain't got the cash. Ross says maybe your stepdaddy will help. Hmm, not likely. Wormleggin be calling GC a spoiled brat. And tells Ross to get his stank ass out of the office. Hey, that's Cornwall's favorite ass you're talking about there. Fine. On his way out, Ross spots Valentine. Are you my daddy? What do you think? Jeffrey Charles decides to open up Trend With. He holds the first annual Poldark family reunion dinner. But it's the first time Ross has been there since Elizabeth, you know. So they toast to her memory. To, to Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Jeffrey Charles asks Mordrake to house it while he's gone. And no hanky pinky. <laughs> I don't think there's a chance of that. <laughs> As if. <laughs> at all. Ross and Demelza have a pre bedtime chat. Ross says life has no meaning without her. Ooh. So she walks over to him. She sits on his lap. Then. Nothing. nothing. Guess who's coming to Cornwall? Catherine Despard, Ned's wife. And Prudy be having some attitude with their new guests. Kitty and Demelza bond over being kitchen wenches. That married up. Hey, Kitty, how did you score a hot colonel from the military? You are never going to believe Lay this. Lay it on me. I was his kitchen wench. No way. <laughs> what the hell are you laughing at? Why are you laughing so? Oh, my God. I am taking offense hey, at this right not now. Not for nothing. Me but so was I. All right? True story. Wait a minute. And you, God. you was a wench? I was a wench. What? <laughs> wench. Oh. <laughs> so, but yeah. you know what? Before I was a wench, I was a slave. I wasn't no slave, but hey, you know what? I dressed like a boy, and he still wanted to marry me. I think this whole place is just a little messed up here. You know, I found the blue dress, but I think I'm gonna be standing there. And there you are, cross dressed after that. What a man! I ain't gonna keep his hands off of me. Kitty tells Ross that her hubby was thrown in the clink without a trial. They need Ross's help. But 
did he take on the government? The crown? The empire? And the slave trade? Oh, hell yeah. He'd be grabbing that Superman cape of his. Because DeMille's didn't marry no scrub. Yeah. What's the scrub? Uh, according to Urban Dictionary, a guy who mooches off everyone else and has nothing going for him in life probably still lives with his mama, doesn't have a car, a job, or a plan. Jeffrey Charles. Yeah. The Mahogany King has come to town with his perky daughter, Cecily. Hello, come on. Do you know where you're going to? We have come to Cornwall just to marry you. And get some money too Do you know? Thank you, Cornwall! Mr. Mahogany is kissing Wormleggin's ass because he knows he is about to be knighted. And he wants daughter Cecily to be Lady Wormleggin. Wormleggin be laying off the miners at Will Plenty. Which is now being called Will Scarcity because apparently Will Nothing was already taken. It's a real bad name. Will we? Tester Giddon and her scruffy gang come sniffing around for help. And Demelza says, I'm real sorry, but we ain't got no work for you. Will we? Ross visits Ned in prison. And Ned gives Ross the 411 on why he's been wrongly accused. Cornwall's Norma Ray fires up the miners. Sam Sam the preacher man sees a soul in need of saving. Ooh, greater the sinner, the sweeter, sweeter the, the victory. victory. Father, forgive me, I'm about to sin. He likes a dirty girl. Valentine shows Wormlingen a picture of Elizabeth. This sends George on a bus to Crazy Town with a stopover at Overreact. Tess reckons Demelza is just too grand to remember what it was like to be starving. Demelza reckons she remembers just fine and wants to help them, but we don't know why. So Tess tells Lady Bountiful right where to shove it. Where the sun don't shine. That's right. Uncle Kerry thinks that Wormlegged should hook up with Cece. Or at the very least, join Tinder. What's Tinder? It's just a swipe to the right. And then you'll find a good one. Let's do the time worm again. But Wormy's too busy seeing dead people. Morwenna and Drake Hake slip into bed. But she's still scarred from her toe-sucking pig of a husband. And ain't nobody doing the nasty in Cornwall. No how. After Demelza hears a prowler in the night, she wonders if it's Tess and her merry band of pissed off miners. Hi-ho! Hi-ho! Two trash your house, Bingo! So she offers Tess a job in hopes of keeping an eye on her psycho ass. <laughs> Turns out Cece's not interested in doing the season. She's attending political meetings. Where she meets Jeffrey Charles and sparks fly. Catherine gives a TED talk on abolition. And she has a crowd eating out of her hands. A Bible thump in James Hadfield. Played by Outlander's Bonnie Prince Charlie. Mock me, the second coming is nigh. Where's Jamie? Yeah. Merwin and Drake Hakes share a quiet moment at Trend With. Drake thinks this is a good time to make a move. Hey Merwinna, let me tell you something baby. I want to hold you and I want to hug you and I want to tease you and I want to squeeze you. That's right. But Marwenna says... Can't touch this. Want to touch this? Don't touch this. Won't touch this. Demelza and sweet Caroline visit their children's graves. They see Valentine at his mama's grave. Caroline wonders which is worse. Burying a child? Or leaving one behind. During a night out at the theater, Ross channels his inner Sherlock to thwart an assassination attempt on the king. Is there nothing he can't do? Oh, Ross. Later at Nampara, Goodness gracious, there's a great bowl of fire! And Prudy's passed out over a jug of booze! Demelza races to get everyone to safety. And later, she asks Tess if she had anything to do with it. Later, Ross is brought to a mysterious kingsman at gunpoint. My name is Wickham. Perhaps you've heard of me. Oh my god! Wickham! From Pride and Prejudice! Your actions have proven your loyalty to the king! You ran away with Lydia Bennett! You could be of use to the king. And then you had to marry Lydia Bennett, but she didn't want to marry Lydia Bennett. And it became this whole thing! You'd be an official kingsman, would you consider serving the crown? And then you had to meet the Bennett family. But she didn't want to meet the Bennett family. And the whole time, Lizzie is just standing in the corner going, I got my eyes on you, boy. Is that a yes, then? Will you sign my DVD? I'm not that Wickham. Do you know Colin Firth?
Wormleggen is still seeing dead people, and it's getting out of hand. Today, the role of Uncle Carrie will be played by Edmund Fry. And now another episode of As the Worm Turns. George, we need to get you to London for your investiture. Tell him you have to consult with me. I have to consult with Elizabeth first. Elizabeth? Elizabeth's dead, isn't she? Tell him he's crazy. You're crazy. I'm crazy? Tell him I'm right in front of you, dearest. I'm right in front of you, dearest. Dearest? You mean in front of him. I mean in front of him. Who is him? Him. Him. You. You're in front of me. I'm in front of you. I'm in front of you. Yes, you are. Me. Me. Ha. Who the hell is her? Ha. She's in front of me, dearest. No. No. She's not. She is. Not dearest. Forget dearest. No. I just mean she's in front of me. Who the hell is she? Will Uncle Carrie ever find out who George is really talking to? Will George ever come to his senses? Will Elizabeth ever leave the show? Tune in next time for As the Worm Turns. Demelza's off to London. Pretty ain't too happy she's being left behind to clean up the ashes from the fire and make everything fitting. And to deal with Tess, the pretty possible pyromaniac. What, what could, could possibly, possibly go wrong? wrong? Once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Rose Tree Cottage, Mary and Edmund Fry of Pasadena, California, who've just laid out this beautiful afternoon tea for us. They are so good to us. They really are, and it's our favorite place in the world. If you're ever in the Los Angeles area, you must come try Rose Tree Cottage for afternoon tea, the most authentic English afternoon tea. It's you like you're find. not even in LA. It's not. Then here we go. So let's talk about the episode over tea. Okay, well, what we didn't talk about a lot in our dish was this new character of Ned Despard. Yes. Who is based on a real historical character. I did not did know that. did marry his kitchen wench. That wasn't as big a scandal. The interracial aspect of it wasn't as big a scandal in this time period as the okay. fact that she had no money. Because okay, if you were an heiress from the Indies and you had a lot of money, you were okay. But if you were poor, that's what makes the scandal. I'll be interested to see how much is actually covered in this season. Yeah. So, you know, and nobody is doing anything in Cornwall. I mean, none of the couples are getting it on. We are not <laughs> seeing any of the guys shirtless. Hello, Mammoth Screen, Debbie, get the shirts off the guys, first of all. And second, nobody's touching each other. Okay, we want some action. And uh, but yeah, Jeffrey Charles has this budding romance. With, with Cecily. Yeah, yeah so making conversation at the abolitionist rally where you yeah. go to pick up chicks. And, and Marwenna, uh, she just needs to get over it now. Okay, the so toe-sucking pig is dead. She has like PTSD. And she does, but we just need to move it along for you the know sake who of should you know, talk excitement to her. on television. Well, what doesn't happen, Kitty Despar should talk to her because God knows she's been through it. Yes. So she should go and kick Marwenna and say, come on, <laughs> you know, we've got to live for today. And my favorite part of today's Poldark Dish episode is our special guest star, Edmund Fry owner of Rose Tree Cottage. A wasn't, man of many talents. Yes, wasn't he brilliant as Uncle Warlegan? <laughs> Uncle <laughs> Carrie, yes. Uncle Carrie. We are so sad that this show is coming to an end, so we're going to savor every little bit and every little episode. Yeah, and for the book readers, I think we're, we're looking at how is this going to help us understand what happened in those later books that are like over a decade right. later. And we all wondered what happened in the interim and Debbie's, and Debbie's kind of setting it up for us. For us. So That's this really is really nice. cool. So it's exciting. So thank you. Thank you, Debbie Horsfield. Thank you, Damian Timmer and the whole team at Mammoth Screen for supporting Pole Dark Dish. And thank you, our fans, our audience for watching each week. That's it for this week. We hope to see you next time. I'm Marlise. And I'm Elise. And we're the Pole Dark, Dark Dish. Dish. Rawr!